Hey there, everybody! This is Spiraling Helix. Welcome back to Paper Mario Color Splash. Last time we made our way through Blue Bay Beach. I missed a colorless spot. I will be sure to show that off when we return there because we will be returning there later. But this time we are heading to Daffodil Peak. Where. I don't know really what we're doing here, but we're, we've got too many paint stars. Let's see what they do. We do. Our main goal right now is to make it into the Crimson Tower, but we are still missing two toad keys, so we'll have to keep an eye out for both of them. Anyway, though, here we go. Daffodil Peak, the gates are shut. However, there is a gatekeeper. Welcome to Daffodil Peak. Home of the legendary Mountain Sage. A Mountain Sage? That's one of those guys who knows everything, right? Amazing! Did you hear that, Mario? If this guy's really a wise old sage, he must know where to find the paint stars. Let's climb this mountain and meet the Mountain Sage. Cool idea, but you'll need a climbing permit before I can let you climb the mountain. Head through the gate to your right and buy a permit from the park ranger. You'll find him in his cabin. Here, I'll open the gate. Okay then. Just a very slight detour, but not so bad. Well, if we head over here, I have to say, I actually really like this detour. Hmm, what's with this place? Mood seems kind of gloomy. Is this the park ranger that the gatekeeper mentioned? Maybe he's one of those emo types. Oh, hey. Need a climbing permit? Yes, sir, we'd like to climb Daffodil Peak and meet the Mountain Sage. Yeah, look, I'm sorry, but I'm not really in the mood. My cabin is a wreck. Randall's broke in and drained the colour everywhere. I'm too depressed to do my job. We understand. These colourless spots are a real downer. I'd be depressed too. Mario, this guy's really bringing me down. Think we can fix the place up a bit? Sure thing, that's why we have this awesome paint hammer. Plus, I can't stand leaving any colourless spots for too long. Because I'm a completionist, I just have to do everything in a game. Usually. But let's just fill this in. Seems to get a little bit brighter which with each. I have so many mushrooms, I don't need any more game. But with each bit we fill in, it seems to get a bit brighter. Although that's probably just me. Anyway, that's all we could see. Maybe back here? Yeah, there's one. Okay, and... Oh, crap! This is an unfurl block. Hitting an unfurl block grants you the power to unfurl certain objects, but only for a limited time. While your unfurl power is active, just hammer things that bear the unfurl mark to, well, unfurl them. Come to think of it, wasn't there something with the same mark inside the cabin? Yes, there was. Okay, now, having no music here sucks, but just listen to this. Okay, you don't get that long to hear it, but we will hear the full bit later. You have a time limit to unfurl whatever you're gonna hit too. Oh, this is my favourite chair. Somehow it must have got folded up into a plain old box. Nice unfurling, Mario. But they must have also drained the colour from it. What a shame. It was my favourite chair ever. Um, easily fixed, Toad. Let's just give it a couple of good old whacks. I can't believe it! Mario, you fixed my place! Thanks so much! My heart and my cabin are back to their bright, happy selves. And as a thank you, here! That's a cool chair. Take this climbing permit. That'll usually run you a pretty penny, but this one's on the house, so to speak. You 
you got the mountain climbing permit? I want that chair. Wonderful! Thanks, sir. Glad we could help. I actually feel a lot better, too. Awesome! Now we can head up Daffodil Peak. Now, really, I think the only point of going in there is technically to, one, see that character, and two, learn about the unfurl block. But now, with our newfound skills, let's begin to make our way up Daffodil Peak. Yes, we have a climbing permit. Pernit? I don't know. I'm a bit surprised you got one. Anyway, let me start my spiel over. Helps me remember my lines. <clears throat> Welcome to Daffodil Peak, home of the legendary mountain sage. You'll find a sage at the peak of the mountain. Alright, I'll open the mountain path. Have a good climb, Mario. Wait, you say Mario to everyone in your spiel about climbing the mountain? Interesting. How many Marios are there? Anyway, we have a new enemy which I'm not gonna fight if I can help it because we will be seeing one of them in just a moment, trust me. There is another spiny we have to fight, so I'll show you that one. But this one here, I, I'll, I'll skip. And another new enemy already! Some flying... well, that's not what they're called. Some para, Cooper paratroopers. Anyway, they're pretty actually annoying to avoid, especially when you're trying to get everything, but you'll learn what stops them attacking you and their boundaries fairly quickly. But I think I will fight one of these guys. This one here. Nice! Okay, jumping on them once removes their wings, and then they're basically just a normal Koopa Trooper, even if their name hasn't changed. But I actually want to do something special for this fight. I'm gonna use a replica card. The Plunder rep Replica card we picked up in Blue Bay Beach! So we can see what it does. I have no idea how to do the action command for this. So I'm just gonna mash the button, because it seems good for mashing. There we go. So to plunge the card, I don't know its action commands like uh, pretty much every other thing. Most of them aren't just mash the A button. But I just mashed it there. I think the more enemies the better it is. I have no idea there's a fight in this pipe. Here we go. And this is the spiny I was talking about. Spinies are basically buzzy beetles. Except they have spikes. So don't jump on them. That's the recommendation. Now, I don't believe I can take him out with a single worn out hammer or even a single hammer if I get a grain. So I'm gonna use three. Okay, a single hammer would easily take him out, but three worn out hammers is good. A single one can do it if you can hit an excellent, but hitting excellence is stupidly hard. So, no. Okay. <laughs> uh, I don't know what that noise. <laughs> I don't know what that noise is, but there seems to be someone up there that we should help out. But avoiding the Koopa Power Troopers, I am going to jump off the cliff. Because there is a colorless spot here. And oh hey, I got my car back. Actually. Okay. I took a little bit of damage in that fight, but that's fine. Like, you just have so much health. You're usually good if you block attacks. But it's pretty easy to one-shot enemies anyway. Don't want to miss that. Cool. So let's also not miss this card that sucks, actually. I could have been okay missing that, but I have to get everything. Whoa! Thanks for the help, Mario. I was searching for the fabled mountain sage, but I got jumped by a group of shy guys. To add insult to injury, I never found the mountain sage. Was this... Before or after you got jumped from the guy guys? Maybe he's on vacation? What you said makes no sense. Plus, you're only halfway up the first part of Daffodil Peak. And going down and around here. All the way up. Well, up quite a bit, actually. Okay. I'm not worried about the Cooper Power Trooper right here, but those two on top are quite scary. And if I head here, 
they won't attack me. But if I hammer this, but they're after me. <laughs> oh, they, they chased me there. Nope. Abandon. Huh? What's your deal? <laughs> I fell off a cliff and creased my leg. It's pretty bad. Yeah, let's see if we can help him. Hey Mario, you fixed my leg. Thanks. Toad number one of the Purple Rescue Squad reporting for duty. Heading off to Ruddy Road. And he just jumped off the cliff. That's how you creased your leg in the first place, wasn't it? Anyway, gotta head back up again. Okay. They're both down here. Let's see if I can get... No, I have to fight them. If I want to get that colourless spot. Okay, so... I showed off the plunger replica. But I'm gonna show off... Actually, no. I'm not gonna show off another thing. It's about time I darn showed off this card, though. This card has been waiting a long time to get shown off. I'm going to show off... The lion jump once for like at last. I'm sick of waiting for groups of more than two enemies. Okay, so that didn't look like much there, but the way the lion jump works. So the lion jump, you will go from the front of the line of enemies to the back of the line and then back to the front. The power decreases. That was a what's that? I'll take that. The power decreases with each jump you do. So the enemy at the very end of the line will take the least amount of damage just because that's the only enemy that you probably won't hit twice. Also, each jump takes a shorter amount of time. Probably could have avoided this fight, but I'll show it off anyway. Each jump does take a shorter amount of time to do. So you'll need to be quick in that regard. Do I have a worn- why do I have a worn out jump? Okay... I'll use a another line jump and then my worn out jump because why on earth would I want to keep a worn out jump? I should get rid of all my worn out hammers too. Anyway... So it can get very hard to time the whole line, but if you do, it is so satisfying. Anyway, they are a very powerful card because of that as well. But you do have to be careful if there's in a line of enemies, a single spiked enemy ruins the whole thing. Of course, you can miss the reaction, the action command, I mean, in order to skip it. But why would I want to fight those two spinies when I can just run past them? Anyway, heading up here, it seems we have another item with the unfell mark on it so let's grab okay i'm waiting for a card in particular this battle card i'm gonna get right here that's not a battle card that's actually a brand new enemy kind of this is a shy guy five stack now we've seen the four stacks before in uh, i'll just use a triple worn out. I didn't even need to colour the darn thing in, but it doesn't matter. Anyway, we saw some four stacks in Cherry Lake, but seeing as they're aiming for five stacks there, we're gonna see five stacks from now on. But I didn't see that enemy in the first place. Like, I knew it was around, but I thought it was on the right hand side, not behind this block. But here is one of the best cards in the entire game that isn't a thing card. We get a blaze hammer. Oh my goodness, blaze hammers are so overpowered. However, they don't have any stronger variants. That's the catch. So, blaze hammers, they're good for maybe the first half of the game. They're still useful even at the end of the game, but you're gonna have huge cards and cards times five and stuff that you're just not gonna care that much. Anyway, hammering those pegs to get the unfurl block to appear. Oh, that's an unfurl block. There must be something around here with an unfurl mark on it then. Let's go look around for it. 
Okay, let's go and smash that pipe. Awesome, I just can't talk. Doing that music, guys, it's so cool. Anyway, moving on up Daffodil Peak. That was a cool looking pipe, might I just add. We have an interesting looking door right there. But enough about that door, let's head through here. Ah, uh, Mario! I didn't expect to see you here. I'd love to stick around and sweep the floor with you, but I've got places to be, lives to ruin. You know how it is for us bigwigs. But I suppose I could leave you with a little taste of my Koopa magics? Down on my game pad. What are you doing, Kamek? What are you doing, Kamek? Time for my Koopa magics. Hee hee hee. This could be one of three things. Let's see what I end up with. Oh scrap. This is the worst one I could get right now. Oh no. All my cards have been turned out turned into worn out jumps. Okay. I don't know what these worn out jumps are. They're also not colored in. I cannot run away. I cannot use the battle spin, I don't think. So, yeah, this is Easily probably the worst one you could get the other two variants you could also get which I'm sure we will see later in the game is All your cards are hidden from you So you just see the backs of the cards like I've been showing on screen Like right now now. I'm gonna show you on screen now what cards. I am actually Wasting at the moment but I'm not gonna know myself until I edit the video, so yeah, this sucks. I have no idea what cards I just used up. Why on earth did I use two of them? That was so dumb. But, for clearing a battle with a Kami Curse, you get bonus coins, which is quite nice. Also, from this point onwards, Kamek can appear during pretty much any battle. And it's random. So yeah. Now, this door here, I'll start speaking about Kamek in just a moment. But if you match three colours, it's fine if you miss, you just lose one point. You'll get a little bonus game! And in the bonus round, the yellow door leads to Pick a Pipe. Or Prize Pipe Pads, I should say. Pick a pipe, get a prize, follow the pipes, you'll always turn. So I want the middle pipe, so let's follow that. It goes right, right, left. So I want the second to the right. Let's go. I think I did it. It's okay if you miss these, there's really no point to doing it. Looks like I'm gonna get a replica card though. Might show that off a bit later. Nice, that's it. Okay, so back to Kamek battles. Now, there can be three types of battles. One has your cards hidden from you and shows the back of the cards being red, even if they're not colored in. The other, Kamek will take all of your cards for a moment and leave you with just a few cards remaining, just a selection. Of course, you get all your cards back when the battle ends and all that stuff. But with that, guys, I think next time we are going to explore the rest of Daffodil Peak, which actually isn't too much, but it's enough for me to split the episode. So next time we will explore the rest of Daffodil Peak, as I just said. I am repeating myself. Anyway, this has been Spiraling Helix. Goodbye, everybody. See you next time.